In today's video, we're gonna answer the question, how do I create and use automation in my music production? Automation is a surprisingly massive part of the music production process. Whether you've recorded a band and you've mixed it or you're producing music in the electronic genres, recording synths and using VSTs, automation is the thing that takes a relatively bland sounding track, making it a far more interesting experience to listen to. It can also be the thing that allows a mix to translate so much better by elevating the vocal just a little bit at the key moments and ducking everything else back or helping the kick drum push through on that rise up into the drop. We use automation to make these subtle adjustments and ideally if we're doing it right the listener has no idea it's even happening. First thing I'm going to do today is dive into the different types of automation. You'll probably find in your door be it Logic, Ableton, Cubase that there are different options read, write, touch, lap and these apply across the gamut. Bit, Mon ami. for most part with FL Studio kind of being the outlier but it works differently to just about every other DAW. The meaning for these is actually relatively simple. You see read automation very simply means we're telling this channel to just read any of the automation that it currently finds. What's going on under the hood in your DAW is that when a track is playing it's actually reading hundreds of different parameters that could be automated but they'll all just be linear and left alone so it doesn't actually do anything. What write does is allow us to adjust multiple parameters at once and it will write all automation lanes but that also means in many cases it will also write automation lanes that you aren't touching which can be kind of cumbersome when it comes to editing them later. This is where the options of touch and latch come in. What touch does for example is let's say I was to adjust a knob on my controller and I wanted to turn the pan from the center just off to the side. When I do that with touch and I push that to there when I release that control it will move back at a relative speed back to the center whereas latch would allow that to push to that side and when I let go of that control it will remain in that spot until adjusted again. And that there touches on some of the ways that we can introduce automation. We'll go over some examples today where I very simply just draw in two points, point A, point B, and then adjust that information so that point A starts at one point and point B starts at another point. And we'll have a line that either can be linear or logarithmic in a curve going from point A to point B. This is called drawn in automation. We simply use the pen tool to put two separate points in and we control between those points. Here's a really simple example of how some automation can add life, movement, depth, etc., into your track. This track here starts in with a built up drum break. Here it is without the automation being applied. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. All right, so it's all kind of rudimentary. The drum break's just there, it sits in there, the pads all move. Now, here it is with the automation, and what the automation does here is it takes the high end of the EQ, working like a filter, and slowly brings the drum break in. Now that build up is significantly different, but all that's actually happening is all of the drums barring the ride in this case are now being filtered and swept up using automation, giving life and animation to the track. But we can also record automation such as using a DAW controller or something like a Mackie desk for volume control, pan control or plug-in parameter control. There's really no limit to what you can automate as well. We could automate a fader, for example, to bring the level 
scale up or down at a key moment for a particular sound. However, this means we then can't adjust the fader later because it's got automation written to it and it will always now conform to that adjustment we made. And as the track goes on, it needs to become slightly lower and lower as different things are being added into the layers. So you can see here I've used automation. So it comes in at zero dB. So we've got that full impact of the guitar happening. And it dips back by one and a half dB over the course of that sound. Now later in the track, we go from one and a half dB to minus three, and we go from minus three all the way down to minus six over here. And we're controlling the dynamic of that track, and then it's allowed to come all the way back up to zero at that key moment. So here it is in context being reduced by that 3 dB down to 6. Now what would that be like if we allowed it to remain at zero the entire time? My opinion is it would be far, far too loud and overwhelming. By using automation, we can adjust it to precisely where we want it to be sat in the mix at that relevant time. And by using the gentle slopes over time here, it's not even noticeable that it's happening. So we could add a plugin such as a gain stage plugin onto our channel and we could automate the gain there. That allows us to have fluctuations in the gain volume, but still be able to freely adjust the mix using our fader. We can use automation for creative effects as well. So in this example here, what we've got is the vocal in the introduction and I'm using a send here. So if we take the vocal channel, see it goes to bus seven. What we're doing here is I'm pushing the automation into the send to give us extra reverb. And you see when the notes kind of fade out here, I'm pushing the reverb up, I'm making those notes tail out a little bit longer. All this time I've been thinking about why I stayed with you. Oh. So we can just hear that little reverb push by just using that send there and just dialing it up. You don't even notice it's going on, you just get this big reverby tail. All this time I've been thinking about why I stayed with you. All this crap. So right there is a basic introduction to what automation is, what the different types of automation are, and just a very tiny fraction of the things that you can automate in your track to bring life, attention, and creativity to it. I really hope it's been helpful for you. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like more tutorials like this, well, there are hundreds on the channel which you can subscribe to right here. Thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos.